Hi guys. How many of you know that like how did India get its name? I know all of you had lunch but lunch means energy please. Indus Valley Civilization. Okay, does it anything has to do with the color indigo? Yes. What is indigo? Color, but see a little history about indigo is that like before the East India Company came to India, uh, Britishers and the Western world used to wear clothes. But the colors or the dyes that these people were using were from a plant derivative which was not permanent or which was not good. So they came to India which had a plant called as indigo, where it's a kind of a blue color which is kind of a permanent thing. So the textiles or the colors, what uh, the clothes that you're wearing, the different colors you see is because of indigo. That color or the plant from India changed the way which people wear clothes. The kind of clothes that people used to wear long time back had colors which were not that good. So the plant indigo changed that. And when we started this company of ours, Broadcast Wearables, we had a similar theme in mind. We want to change the way people wear clothes. I am Ayyappan Agubandi. I am an inventor and entrepreneur. I've authored about uh, 12 patents. I've worked on multiple things from chemicals to hardware, software, mobile, now in textiles. I have some knowledge about textiles, the way they were and the way they will be, and I'll share some experiences. Would you want to go through that presentation? Do you think, like, how many of you will agree to this thing? That, like, uh, wearables are something which has electronic components or computing devices that we wore, we are close to our body or on our body. Wearables are some electronic devices or computing devices that we wear on our body or near our body. How many of you would agree to this? Okay, only two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only that much? Then what are wearables? What are wearables? Wearables are actually that. What year or approximate year was the first wearable created? Any guesses? It is approximate. Sorry, fifth century? Sorry? No, no, I'm not talking about the country, but see, wearables are something which have a mechanical uh, or a computing thing inside them and which are worn on the body or near the body. So taking this definition, which year was the first wearable created? 20th century? Okay, that's some more guesses, please. Will any of you believe that the first wearable was created in 1511? Yeah. Uh, there was this inventor called as Peter Henley, considered to be the father of the watch. He created a watch which was like the size of three inches, and that's technically the first wearable. And then like a couple of years later, 1972 was the first LED watch created. The creator was in, uh, inspired by this novel called as 2001 The Space Odyssey. This was created by a company called as Pulsar. Pulsar watches are seen in a lot of James Bond movies. And then the early calculator in 75, and then a lot of Casio and uh, watches like this in 90s. 2000, yes, this lady was right. A lot of wearables came into existence. We popularly know these as Fitbits and things like that. And then like Google took it a little further with Google Glass and other things. This is a brief history of sort of how wearables evolved over a period of time. Uh, if you look at 20 years back, people used to have these big boxes in their houses, TVs. And then over a period of time, this TV became a uh, portable. There was a small boxes which people could carry. And that portable TV became a phone. In a phone, we can watch the movie. And that same thing, now we watch it on a uh, watch. We can watch images, movies, things on a smartwatch. There's been a transition period, and then like this will evolve. Some of what we believe is that like, if you look at any of the electronics, the guys who are into electronics, who work, all these electronics are rigid, they're hard, the PCBs are hard, uh, the sensors are hard. But if you look at a human body, it's very soft, 
and curvy. So it's a jacket. Okay. It's called a hug shirt. There's a little text over there, hug shirt, hug received. Like what happens is when uh, one person hugs the other person, the person who is hugged feels sensation at a couple of places. So if you'd want to send a hug to somebody, there is a garment available. The red spots that you see are, uh, has actuators and vibrators. So if you'd want to send a hug, the other person just needs to wear this t-shirt kind of a thing. And from a phone, you send a hug. Some other interesting thing. The next slide. Uh, what do you think this is? Yes, I see one hand. What's that? Any guesses, please? OK, this is a concept created by one of a designer in Europe called as Intimacy 2.0. This is a garment which will change its color when you are sexually aroused. When you are intimate, based on your intimacy levels, the color will change. The color of the garment is actually black. But what this does is that it detects your heartbeat. And based on your heartbeat, it changes, your color, changes the color of the garment. This becomes transparent when the wearer becomes aroused. Do you think this is possible? OK. Third one, what do you think this is? Pillow, good. But we've been talking about technology, wearable, sensors, future. So what do you think this does? OK, let me do that thing. What it does is a lot of people fall asleep easily when they listen to music. So what you can do is you can pair this pillow with a phone. And before going to the sleep, you can put your favorite music. And what it does, it, it reduces the volume to such an extent that like, you feel like you fell asleep like, easily. Apart from that, what it does is it's got a sensor which is trying to sense if you're snoring. So when you're snoring, it gently vibrates so that you move your head and you stop snoring. And then it's got a couple of sensors that try to analyze your sleep pattern. Depending on the movement of your head, it analyzes your sleep pattern and sends all this information to your phone so that when you wake up, you know how did you sleep, what time did you not sleep, and based on that, you can improve. When you set an, an alarm on your phone, what it does is, at that particular point of time, it will wake you up gently. Now, these are some of the ways which people are using, innovative ways of technology, textiles, in improving the way, the quality of life. Socks. Now, what it does is, it's, it's from a company called the Sensoria. It's got a couple of sensors. It will tell you how far you've run, how fast you've run. But on top of these, it will tell you how did you run? Did you run properly or not? This is a mat called Ruggy. When we go to a five-star hotel or a three-star hotel, we'll see a mat. The moment you get out of the bed, like you don't step on the floor, but you step on a mat. So this is that kind of a mat. The difference is that like it's got an alarm clock. So the creator, what he's done is he's put an alarm clock in there. So the moment you wake up, see, the alarm rings, the alarm on the mat rings. You can get on the mat and like get back to the bed, but it will not stop ringing till you're there standing on the mat for about five seconds. So you'll have to get up, you'll have to stand on the mat, you'll have to stand for a couple of seconds, only then will the stop uh, stopping the alarm. The mat stops the alarm. Now we've been inspired by a lot of these works and a lot more. So we thought, how can we change the world? So these are some of the works what we created. This. The t-shirt that I'm wearing is the world's first touch-enabled programmable t-shirt. What I mean by that is that if you look at any t-shirt, most of the times the message on the t-shirt is static. In the sense you buy a t-shirt with some message, the message will stay just like that. But here, I can use a smartphone to send whatever I want. I can draw anything. I can draw a pattern. I can send an animation. If I want to have a coffee with a friend, I can just type, say, coffee. See, I randomly did something, tick, and this changed.
So this is a first invention, one of our first inventions. Then we took it a little further by saying that Steve Jobs changed the way pe uh, people used phones. There was a company called Nokia at some point of time, and then like Apple introduced iPhone. The feature that differentiated iPhone from other phones was that like the phone had touch feature. When a phone comes, you click on the green button. When you want to increase the volume, you swipe it. So that's got touch, gesture, tap features. What we did is we created a technology uh, where you click on the logo here. I don't have the t-shirt with me now, but if you click on the logo, the panel gets switched off. And if I want to change the image, I don't need to take the phone and like change it from the library. I just need to swipe on the logo and the next image comes. So this is our first creation. And then what we did is we got a lot of requests and complaints. A lot of people said t-shirts are worn by men. What do we do for women? So we thought, OK, women look beautiful. How can we make them look even more beautiful? So we created something. This is our next creation. These are clothes that glow. If you look at the designs, there are some parts that glow, actually. That lotus with pink is actually not embroidery. It's like a wire that is attached to the garment and when switched on and connected with a battery, that glows. So when any, uh, suppose a woman is wearing this thing, uh, when she goes out, the design will look normal. When the switch is on, some parts of the design glows. How many one of you want to buy this kind of garments? Cool. I've got some customers then. Thank you. Uh, what we did is that like, we do a lot of research. We do a lot of research in like textiles and garments. One of the research what we did is the next one. What is this? Anybody in electronics can make a guess. Not zero, but uh, the device that displays this kind of things. Sorry? Seven segment display, correct. This is called a seven segment display. Typically, the bigger the seven segment display is, the thicker it will be. On an average, it will be at least a half a centimeter. The things what we see in railway stations are actually a centimeter plus thickness they've got. So what we tried to do is that, like, can we make this thing flexible? If you're able to make this flexible, this can have a reduced weight. The whole container or the box uh, can be reduced. It can consume a lot less electricity. This is our pressure sensor. I took it out from my purse, so you can uh, imagine how thin or thick this would be. Uh, this, when connected to a microcontroller, the more you press, the more pressure it can uh, recognize. And you can fold this any time, any amount of time, and yet this works. So these are some of the things what we are doing. And we think that, like, as the evolution, the one of the slides you saw, like the TV became a portable thing to a mobile to a watch, we believe that the wearables will no longer be solid and rigid. They'll be a part of a human body. They'll be part of garments like these. And we'd want to be one of those things who would want to change the way people wear clothes. Thank you.